Well, it's Monday the 29th of November 2021 and we are about to haul out. Well, we've got some friends coming down for Christmas with their new boat and uh, we don't want to get overtaken by them. Oh, so see, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. I've got a camera on me here for reversing out of the dock. No pressure or anything. This boat doesn't steer very well in reverse either. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. So here we are at Hawks Boatyard and I am what's officially known in the trade as on the tools. So we hauled the boat out on Monday and we launched it today on Friday and everything was done. It's brilliant. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. Cheers again. That's Julian's summary because I just had a go at him for how much he repeats himself and how long it takes me to cut all his sentences. But anyway. Thank you to everyone at Hawks Boatyard for making that happen. Cheers. Cheers. This is Brilliant 2, a Kelly Peterson 44 built in 1978. This is us, the Smallwoods. And this is the story of our long overdue boat refit. Welcome along for the ride. Well, it's Monday the 29th of November 2021 and we are about to haul out. A haul out wasn't really part of the refit plan, but it's just part of the general um, maintenance. It's been how long since we last hauled out? Just over three years. So our anti foul has really had it and we've been managing to um, get this long out of it because we have a friend, Rob Vare, who is a diver and he does hull scrubs here in Early Beach and we've been getting him to go down and scrub the hull periodically, which gives us extra time out of the anti-foul. We use an Altex anti-foul. It's copper based, isn't it? Yeah, it's copper. It's got really high copper content in it. What we do is put two coats on and three coats along the leading edges and along the waterline and we get a good two years without having any scrub um, bec mainly because we use the boat quite a lot well normally we do and then after two years it start we start to get a bit of growth so that's when we get rob in and he actually he doesn't scrub the hull he has a high pressure like a gurney an underwater gurney i don't know how it works he gives it a, a blast and we get a couple a of time. months at a time out of it oh, it just works out that's the way we do it so we hauled out three years ago back in june i think so we've gone over a bit and uh, there's quite a forest down there now we still get six knots under power but, but that's um, that's way below what we yeah. should be should be going so it's going to be really exciting to get back in the water and be going at our proper speed well we've got some friends coming down for christmas with their new boat and uh, we don't want to get overtaken by them um, when we're um, having a couple of races here and there uh, so see that's what it's all about that's what it's all about so anyway we need to get going because we've got half an hour I think for haul out yeah and we're in Port of Ely and the um, the lift the travel lift is over in the Coral Sea Marina in Hawks Boatyard so come with us got a camera on me here for reversing out of the dock no pressure or anything boat doesn't steer very well in reverse either that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it and we get a gust of wind just as we're about to let go ready We're gonna we're not gonna hit the bow are we? Go nice and slow, we're gonna blow that bow right around. Look at that. There you go, you're going with the fork now. God, that's the best I've ever done it. Yes. And we're off! We're off.
are at Hawks Boatyard and I am what's officially known in the trade as on the tools what I'm doing is a little repair up the bow here on a, on a ding or a couple of dings that were done a couple of years ago where uh, we ran into the edge of a dock somewhere and we repaired it with Need It um, underwater epoxy putty and so I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just grinding that out basically and uh, going to fill and fair this uh, before we do a bit of a touch up on this area on the stem here to put it back to its former glory. So I'm just mixing up some filler. I don't know how the sand is going to be here because there's constant noise sanding. Anyway, we'll do our best. The filler I'm using is a Technifil product. It's made by the same company that makes Technoglue, the epoxy glue that I use for gluing timbers together and a few other things. It's really easy to sand. The filler in it is uh, microspheres, I think. Structurally, it's, it's no good. It doesn't have any fibres in it. But for, uh, for filling holes and dings and stuff like that, it's ideal. You can put it on. The only trouble is you usually have to leave it overnight before you can sand it. Although, I'm doing this at 11 o'clock in the morning. By, by this late this afternoon, I might actually be able to sand it, but we'll see. It's a two-part, one-to-one. Uh, you probably couldn't use it underwater, but this is this is above the water. The reason you can't use it underwater, I, I think I'm right in saying that, we'll check on the specs, but if it has microspheres in it, the, the usual case is that you, you can't use the product underwater because it absorbs the seawater. There's another area here. It's uh, a join line between the two hulls. It was never really filled effectively. And I've actually repaired this when we first got the boat. There's a crack that ran down through about six or eight feet all the way down here, so I ground all that out. And uh, it's only in the gel coat of the boat. It's not in the, in the actual glass, but it's a bit scary when you see it. We did that uh, about 10 or 12 years ago, and that repair's still okay. But, uh, I think this bit here's just opened up. It's right where the two screws here and they are they're actually the attachment points for the chain plate if you like in there that the uh, inner force stay is attached to the inner force stay has a has a stay which goes through the middle of the, the uh, v-bur and comes down and goes right through the hull here which is a, a nice strong chain plate anyway the, the filler has uh, the, the, the gel coat has cracked and uh, I'm just going to backfill that. It's not as bad as this cosmetic area. So I've done that bit of filling on the stem up there and just got a bit of servicing to do the prop. There's a couple of things to check. Uh, one of which is the anode, which uh, this, one's, this one's done three years, but uh, it hasn't gone that badly. I've started taking it off. It's held on by three bolts. i just got to take one more bolt out and uh, we'll take that off and put another one on. I need a dreaded Allen key. Let's see if I can find one that fits. I've got a bad, uh, bad feeling about this. That's the only Allen key I've got here. It's uh, sort of set here. Let's hope they if it fits. No, that one's too small. Oh, here we go. Ooh, I think I got lucky. I it was going to be terrible. I hope I don't drop it because there's a pit down here which is about eight feet deep under these boards. This is where they put the uh, maxis and then you boat with a really deep keel. I think this is the rudder pit and then about 40 feet up there is the keel pit. So that's the anode off and it uh, definitely needs replacing. Luckily I've got one down there which uh, I bought a few years ago. I quite like these, these rotary sanders from Bunnings. They're just a nylon, nylon bristle that's got something abrasive in it and they're good for brass, bronze, they don't do too much damage. I'm just going to use that to clean the back of this up. This is the cone anode and this is a max prop and the anode just 
screws on the back you have to really clean it up in there make a good connection for the zinc to contact the bronze otherwise it won't do its job and your prop will get electrolysis and corrode this boat's been pretty good for electrolysis it stays in the marina all the time we have no problem with electrolysis at all the blades they're, they're not damaged at all these anodes take a long time to erode and that's it now I'm going to grease the prop there's a little set screw a little grub screw in here and if you take that grub screw out if you can find the right allen key it goes right into the heart of the prop if you've ever seen these before they've got a, a little bevel on the end of each uh, blade shaft and that engages with with a slipping uh, bevel wheel inside and makes the prop blades feather and you stop the engine in, in gear the, the blades go into feather position like that so so they don't create any drag and the propeller doesn't spin as soon as you put it put the thing into gear it spins whichever way you're going to go and sets the blades at the correct angle when you reverse the blades do that present the same face of the blade to the flow it's quite ingenious they work very well anyway back to taking the grub screw out without dropping it in the dreaded pit and then my friend Dan from with Sunday Diesel apparently is going to come along and we're going to screw a grease nipple in there and pump this full of waterproof grease. So I'm doing this repair down here on the field. I think we may have hit a bomby just here. Uh, there was a bit of gel coat missing. Gel coat's not very thick. A little bit of moisture got into the glass so I just ground the glass away until, the, until I've got some, some good glass there. It all seems okay. And I'm going to cover this with a a different kind of filler, epoxy filler again, but it's uh, it's much harder. It doesn't have any micro spheres in it, so it's okay to use under the water. So I'm going to mix this up. This is a two to one mix, and whack that on there. By the time I've finished doing this, I think my blue filler that I put on the stem this morning is probably going to be hard enough to sand. It's very warm today, and it's quite humid. Epoxies love humidity and heat. So uh, I think I'm going to get that sanded today and get uh, probably get the, the, the coat of primer on that. We'll see how we go. It's pretty busy, very busy in the yard and short staff like everyone in here will So I'm just helping out as much as I can so we can get the, the boat done and back in the water. So I've just, uh, I've just finished cleaning up the prop, just preparing it for the prop spin and uh, replacing the, um, the old shaft anode which isn't that bad but you might as well put a new one on it when you when you got the boat out of the water so it's really important here to to clean the shaft up really well so that the anode makes good uh, good contact with the shaft so it protects it properly same with the the cone anode on the back of the propeller so i'm just about to uh, put this on i thought i was going to need to replace the cutlet bearing but it's another thing to watch if you can uh, and how much how much play there is and that's I'd say that's just under a millimeter of wear which is exactly the same as it was three years ago so I'm not going to change it what are you doing Danny I'm prepping up Julian's boat to be painted do you mind being on camera I don't mind at all Julian not at all so we're all taped up ready to hit some uh, what is it Primacon or something Primacon Pro yeah the good stuff. You don't have to turn the music down, you can turn that right back up. I will. <laughs> <laughs>
Friday, 3rd of December. Yeah. And we came out on Monday. We we're meant to be going back in this morning, but well, this had to polish the hull. They've done a fantastic job. It looks amazing. And so that took most of the day. Plus we had to uh, run out to Josh's school. He got a uh, special award today. So that was a nice thing to go and do and I uh, didn't mind delaying splashing for that. Yeah, we're just about to go back in. We got down here for four o'clock and the boat was already in the slings and um, in the lift here. We're just, as Julian said, now waiting for the tide. Jump on board. Yeah. We're gonna pull the pin. Oh yeah? Yeah, okay, we're going. Right. Okay, do you wanna help Josh on? successful haul out a miracle haul out all right so debrief on the haul out <laughs> so we hauled the boat out on monday and we launched it today on friday and everything was done it's brilliant i couldn't <laughs> believe it cheers again that's julian's summary because i just had a go at him for how much he repeats himself and how long it takes me to cut all his sentences but anyway joking aside it was a very full-on week, wasn't it? Not just for us, for the yard. Mm. They were, honestly, well, you see it in the time-lapse footage with all those boats. I couldn't believe how many boats were moving around. And they there they was, moved 10 boats yesterday. It was full-on, absolutely full-on. Mm. Really, really busy. Yes. And yeah, they're just... It's because it's the lead up to Christmas. We've got one week to go to Christmas holiday till the kids break up and everybody wants stuff done and they, they do they they try to do everything they can there's some great guys working on the the boat this week um, so anyway thank you very much to chris and tim and danny thank you to everyone at hawks boatyard for making that happen cheers, cheers. so we hauled out on monday mm. it was later on monday wasn't it i can't remember it seems like a lifetime ago tuesday i started uh, repairing the stem you know getting rid of all the the old bog the needed bog that we've repaired the stem with after damaging it so we got a max prop and the max prop was uh cleaned up and and uh and prop speeded and there was no need to replace the cutlass bearing there was very little wear in it no more than before and uh it was greased up uh dan from with sunday diesel came along and, and uh put the grease nipple into the prop and greased it up for us. The anodes were changed, the cone anode and the and the shaft anode on the prop. That was all good. Um, what else did we do? Oh, we polished the hull. The boys acid, polished the hull. Acid washed and polished the hull. It's the first time we've had that done and it's come up really good. We, it's, it's a painted hull. We, um, we rolled and tipped that hull ourselves 12, 13, 12 13 years, years ago. ago. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it looks amazing right now. They've done a great job there. Anti-fouled, obviously. Now the anti-fouled, I just want to say something about the anti-fouled. Um, this haul out was not technically part of the refit. It's just something that you have to do regularly on a boat. So you, we usually get a couple of years out of our anti-fouled. We've been stretching it and stretching it <laughs> this time. And I think it's actually about three and a half years. Uh, it was incredible when we got back in the water today and as we motored around from the Coral Sea Marina to here at Port of Early, we were doing our old speed. Anyway, um, the anti-foul is massively built up. It just, it, she's not a pretty bottom, let's just say she's a bit dimply, the old girl. And um, when we first came out of the water, everyone was looking and saying, oh, girl, you know, I don't know if there's some blisters there or, you know, it's, we don't think there is any osmosis or anything like that. There's a lot of layers of caked paint. And really, I mean, Julian's a surveyor and he said, oh, you know, if I was surveying this boat, I'd be saying to strip it all back. But 
we kind of know what's there and it's just not part of what we want to do at the moment so the idea was we would just sand it back prime it put more anti-foul on and get another couple of years out of another it another three years yeah and then down the track we would need to look at what we did below the waterline but it just isn't part of the refit right and now for the sake of a uh, 0.2 of a knot boat speed or something like that, that that the rough surface would give you it's just not not an issue well i think also we've still got to finish what we've started uh, inside and we already sort of got um pulled sideways by the cockpit once which was well worth doing but we now really need to focus on getting finished what we started we've already committed to way more than we initially thought we were going to do inside um but we're going to get it done yeah on that note i'll go and get another beer cheers again. cheers <laughs> cheers Cheers! Cheers! Here's to a successful haul out! Are you in the frame? I don't know. Okay. Right, hang on. Oh, you've had some already. Oh, f That's the same as ours! LMS! Alright, are you going to talk all the way through this or what? And action! <sighs> just not working. I'll tell you, we'll be here all night. We've just hauled out successfully, got the boat back in the water between Monday and Friday, so we can go out tomorrow, Saturday. So I think that's worth a bit of a celebration. Cheers. Well, that's my take. Now it's your turn. Go on. Oh, it's lovely here, isn't it? Sun setting. No, Look at the blue water behind us. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so we hauled the boat out on Monday and we launched it today on Friday and everything was done. It's brilliant. Couldn't <laughs> believe it. Cheers again. Cheers. 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 Here's to a successful haul out.